สวัสดีค่ะขอต้อนรับเข้าสู่รายการช่างคุยสวัสดีครับ This is Chang Kui 228, and sorry for our Thai audience. I got to speak English for this episode. <laughs> <laughs> um, for those who, those of you who have been listening to Chang Kui, I think a few episodes, just two or three episodes ago, you should be familiar with our guest here. Um, we invited them over again this time to do an English episode, and then also to. Just for the greater audience, I I also managed to pull in another guy who is also working here in town. Oh, I think I haven't done a good job here. I should be asking, I should be introducing my guest first. So, just right next to me is Rob. Right? Yes. So I should you go with Rob, correct? Yeah. Okay. So I call you Rob, and um, you live here in Thailand. That's right. Two years already. Two in two or three sentences. What are you doing? Then I'll go to uh, pass the word and come back to you later. Okay, so we have a venture-funded uh, startup called Playbases, and we build technology that allows uh, publishers to make their websites and apps more fun. Okay, that's that? enough. Yeah, that's good enough. <laughs> okay, and then we want to. Okay, we we'll go first. Okay. okay. Uh, so my name is Bob. Um, I. Run a app development and marketing agency here called Appsyn. Okay. And uh, also part of the team of Got It, which is a uh, social loyalty platform uh, here in Thailand, helping uh, merchants and uh, restaurants to uh, drive more traffic and bring their customers kind of back okay. through the door and offering promotions and, and discounts from kind of chains and independent stores. For those who cannot guess your accent, where do from you the UK. You're from UK. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and the third one, if you're listening to the audio, you wouldn't be able to guess it. Right? Who this guy's from? <laughs> where it's from? Mm-hmm. So, so my my name is Sid, and uh, I'm from America, the US. Mm-hmm. I've been living in Thailand for about three and a half years. Mm-hmm. Um, I was actually born in Thailand, so mm-hmm. I speak a little bit of Thai. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now, now your Thai is excellent. Not not the first time that you six years. Five years ago. Yeah, five years ago when we first met. Um, but so so I'm involved with a, a startup called uh, Got It uh, okay. with Bob as well. We met at an event last December called uh, Startup Weekend, okay. uh, which is an event all around the world, okay. um, and it was brought to Thailand for the first time by AIS, which is is uh, one of the mobile carriers here. So we got um, second place in that event, and uh, Bob and I, as well as Seven other people have been building this this company for the almost the past year. Okay. Before I forgot, we actually got a fifth person. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> And I got the other guys online on Skype, and his name is Adam. Hi, Adam. Hi. You can you just introduce yourself and it's just it's just yeah shortly. Uh, sure. So my name is Adam, and I uh, have my own company uh, in Sweden. Uh, it's only me. We do uh, software development, mainly uh, Java development and uh, Android development. Mm-hmm. And uh, every winter, I escape the uh, cold weather in Sweden and, and uh, come to Thailand for about uh, three months. Uh, so I've been doing that every winter for I think about seven years now. Okay. And uh, I met Sid back in uh, March this year. Okay. And uh, I've been. Uh, Yeah, big part of the got it team. Okay. So okay, so it's back to me. So I, I I probably have to guide do some moderation. Otherwise, Adam will be confused who I'm talking to. Um. So in here on this episode, we got three guys from the same group. So we got Adam from Sweden. We got Sid and Bob here in Bangkok. You you three of you are from the Got It app team. You you go with Got It right. Right. That that's the name. They say, and then it got Bob um, on his own. The company is called Playbases. That's right. I go by Rob. Bob oh, sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Rob. I'm sorry. It's the same, it's the same name. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's my dad's name, Bob. Okay. <laughs> oh really? Yeah. <laughs> so back to sit first. How three of you, or how you start this, and then how you got to see. Um, Bob and Adam. 
Yeah, so, so Bob and I first met at Startup Weekend last December. Um, about 100 people went up there to pitch app ideas, given one minute each. Mm. And um, everyone in the, in the event, right after the, after the initial pitching, gets to vote on which ideas they think are worth building into prototypes. Mm. And out of about 100 pitches, the, the idea that I pitched for this loyalty card app mm. was in the top 17. Mm. And, and Bob and I connected pretty fast. I, I, I liked his idea quite a bit as well. Um, and he approached me and, and we formed, a, I think, a pretty pretty solid team that, that week um, that's still working together. Um, Adam... <coughs> uh, Adam was not there that weekend. Adam was not there. He was uh, probably by the pool. Uh, on <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> on, on vacation. Yeah. No. Well, it, it's going to be November. He's here, right? December. He was here. December. Uh, he was here. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hot he enough. Here. Otherwise, Sweden would be cold. Man. Right. <laughs> so our our team was missing um, an Android developer. Okay. And we actually had one originally at the start of weekend, but he had his own business uh, based outside of Bangkok and just wasn't able to commit as much as the other people on the team. Mm. So that was our gap for a few months and uh, fortunately we, we met Adam and Adam, even though he's on in Thailand on vacation, he's, he's quite active in meeting other developers, uh, people in the tech community, just judging competitions, helping mentor. Um, He's, he's pretty hardcore in that way, even okay. even when he's on vacation. He, he can tell you more about it than me. So, so. anything you want to add to that, Adam? <laughs> uh, that, that's pretty much how it is. <laughs> I, uh, I kind of go to Thailand as, as a tourist, but uh, I'm, I'm not the average tourist that's just lying on the beach all day. I prefer to stay in Bangkok and meet up with uh, people similar to me, tech people, programmers, and uh, that's that's my kind of fun. <laughs> hmm. So who is approaching who? Uh, I think Adam. We met at a at a meetup event. I think, and um, we actually met. Yeah, we met at, at tech meetup. Uh, yeah, tech meetup. Tech yeah. And first or second meetup there. Yeah, we just started talking and we we met a few times and um, you know at, at first Adam thought we were trying to compete with Ensogo and then. I convinced him that we are actually doing something different. <laughs> <laughs> oh, something else. Eh? Yeah, um, but definitely Adam has really strong technical background as well as a good, uh, just good common sense about usability and, and, and business as well. So it's it's been a good good uh, partnership so far. Mm, okay, so Sid is working here in Thailand, um, and this is like a second job. They got it up, second job, and you. And on that um, startup weekend night, you managed to pull in some talents, form a group, and carry on with the idea up until today. Yeah. Right? But Sid, you're working here in Thailand already, so I just want to give the audience the, 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 the full background who's coming. And Bob, you are, no, you're also in Thailand. You've been working here for long. Uh, so I, I actually came, uh, I did my MBA here, but studying um, from abroad, so with a, a UK university. Um, my background was doing business kind of in Asia with another company from the UK, so I'd been to Thailand both on kind of for pleasure, for business. Mm. Um, it's somewhere that I, you know, really enjoyed coming to and, you know, was interested to see how feasible setting up a business here was. and. I'd actually say it's pretty difficult. Uh, I think you need to be persistent. You need to be patient. You, I think there's, you know, there's a lot of obstacles to, to, to forming a business here as a foreigner. Um, but if you are sure that it's worth kind of persevering, um, as I was, then you know I'm glad I'm glad I did that because I think there's there's a, a real buzz now about startups in in Bangkok yeah. I think it's it's increasing there seems to be a lot of stuff happening especially in kind of the tech uh, mm. community so um, you know I'm glad this is this is where where I've kind of decided to, to base myself but uh, I'd say it's not not so easy to, to kind of get to this position when you go there on that startup weekend um, I'm, I'm talking to Bob here were you expecting what do you was it live did it live up what's your expectation on well, I think startup weekend internationally is it's actually quite low budget normally you pay to take part it just you know it's it's like a 
maybe like a non-profit uh, arrangement where people, you know, just come cover costs and uh, take part because they want to be part of mm -hmm. part of something like this. Mm -hmm. I think it's quite uh, a unique um, situation where there's actually like a big sponsor like AIS uh, kind of doing it for this event, mm -hmm. and it was actually you know quite high budget, you know, mm -hmm. in a in a you know top top uh, venue. You know, putting on great food, and so it was a bit more, I guess, upmarket than I, I was expecting. You know, they've got got TV crews down there at the launch, and so it was it was surprising in that respect because I was expecting something right. a bit more rough around the edges. But um, it was also eye-opening to see how many kind of good tech people there are in Bangkok because um, maybe I hadn't, you know, really moved in those circles until until coming to that event. So it's good to know that the that there was a really healthy scene. Um, you know, it helped introduce me to uh, a couple of developers who are now also working with, um, you know, full time. Mm. So it was, I, I really went there to meet people and especially trying to meet developers. Um, but I've met so many people through that from mm. kind of all, all different kind of parts of business. So, uh, you know, really glad I took part in that. And uh, I think, you know, we formed a, a really good business uh, from that. Usual question. Um Can you speak Thai at that point? Put Thai Dai Bang, the my Koi Plong. So understandable. You can understand the conversation in the Mang Thai. I can, but it's more day-to-day -day conversation. When we start going talking business in Thai, it's uh, it's a bit bit too difficult Stretch. for me. Yeah. So I've <laughs> been to quite a few meetings, and uh, it's difficult to follow. But um, fortunately, everyone on the team is kind of fluent in English, so business is typically done in English. Okay. So back, to, uh, Adam. So I'm 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 gonna spend some spend some time the garlic team first. So, Adam. So how? Okay, we established that you've been coming to Thailand for seven years. You're holding some. You you, sorry. You run your own company in in, in Sweden. Uh, yes. All right. So you're established. I put it that way. Yep. Yeah. Uh, all right. And <laughs> how's your Thai? So, um, have you got any experience starting a company in Thailand yourself? Uh, no. Uh, I've been uh, I've been looking into that several times, but uh, it's it's never been uh, viable for me because I I only stay there for about three or four months every year. Mm. And I, uh, I still have um, spent most of my time in Sweden. I have my own company here and my main clients here. So, All right. So this is the, so this is your intention. Uh, Thailand is a your favorite country, but you will you will still be in Sweden in the long term. You don't plan to to yes, migrate. Yes, yeah, Sweden will be my my main uh, my main home. Okay. But I I think I will continue doing this, going back and forth. <laughs> Okay, uh, um, okay. That that's the background. Um, I'm switching to Rob. I found you right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. So, what's your background, Rob? What, how 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 long have you been in Thailand, and how what got you started working here in Thailand? Okay, so about two years ago, almost exactly, um, I I officially moved to Thailand. This was after about three years of coming every summer. And training Muay Thai at the time, I just loved Muay Thai. I traveled to all the famous uh, camps in Thailand, like uh, Sit Yat Thong and Pattaya, and like Tiger Muay Thai in Phuket, and uh, some of them here in um, in Bangkok as well. Um, so I got a chance through through this passion of Muay Thai to really learn uh, and understand the Thai culture. Okay. which exposed me to the food and the language and just hospitality and sanuk sabai and this kind of thing. <laughs> These concepts that are just so Thai. And um, I, I was really drawn to that. And I, I remember my first time coming here um, and feeling that I didn't, I didn't want to leave. I was actually, I hadn't, the, the vacation hadn't even ended yet, but I, I was already feeling I was, I'm going to miss Thailand so much. What were you doing? Before then, you before then, I was working in a game studio in, in California. So you're from tech background. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. So what got the switch? 
to come over? What, well, actually, what, what tricks? Yeah. Well, uh, actually, what I did was I I was uh, <laughs> recruited to come to uh, Thailand and work for a Thai game studio. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. So the transition was great. I came over as a project manager, and this exposed me with um, how to deal with um, Thai staff and how what the type of uh, skill sets that they possessed and what the work culture would be like um, and how it would be different than what I was used to in the U.S. Mm -hmm. because uh, in the U.S., uh, especially in game studios, there's this concept of crunch time and it's, it's just always crunch time and that just means working 10, 12 hours a day for seven days a week sometimes. Mm -hmm. But um, I didn't find that as much here in Thailand. I found that there was more, it was much more of a relaxed attitude. So you have to kind of adjust your milestone dates appropriately, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so um, that, that, that exposure was great for me because, um, you know, that getting, a, getting to work with Thai people and, and seeing their skill set Exposed to the fact, exposed me to the fact that there are some very talented people out here. But it's going to be very different uh, coming as a tourist, to coming as a full time worker. Though I would imagine it was. I I used Chang Kui to learn about okay, Thailand thank you. at the time. <laughs> <laughs> I would um, watch all kinds of videos, and but it was it was weird because now when I look at the map of Bangkok, okay, I know all these soys, I know the streets, but at the time this was like this totally foreign place to me. I don't know what Silom Sukhumvit is. I don't know what, you know, all, any of these places are. I don't know where to live. You know, I don't know how much you should pay. So I spent all all my I brought I brought my money out here. I had a savings account that helped me to move out here, and I spent I went through it so fast because I didn't realize you what, were over overpaying for everything. Yeah, okay. and and very. Um, kind of nervous to try local food so I would eat foreign food and eat expensive dinners a lot you know okay so it took me a while to figure out the the, the Thai prices and and now I, I eat uh, uh, gang every day <laughs> <laughs> anything you want to add to that Adam at all um, uh, not, not really <laughs> <laughs> okay okay um, Coming back to got it app, so at the moment, Sid is starting a company. So I think you, you have formed a company. Yeah, we started a company earlier this year. Obviously, we had to um, sign agreements with with our customers, so we wanted to make sure that we were doing it legitimately. Okay. Um, so we formed a company earlier this year, and um, you know our app has been out for now two and a half months. Yeah, just a just a refresh of. Uh, flashback. So the Guarded app is a, I would say, loyalty program. That's the at its core, it's 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 an app for um, loyalty promotions, loyalty programs for different different merchants, different brands, all all in one app. That's and in terms of tech, in in terms of tech on the technical side, it supports across all platform, um, iOS, iOS Android. and Android, just those two right now. That's like ninety eight <laughs> percent of the whole. Yeah. Thing in the whole world, <laughs> and um, one of the things that's kind of curiosity, uh, we recorded got it at um, I don't remember what when when that was, but just two weeks after that, um, Tim Cook came on stage and announced on the yeah. iOS 6 that they're gonna have this program called Passbook. Yeah. And so, the, at the very first moment, I thought, okay, so what's gonna happen to got it at now? Yeah. So, how did it hit you? Was it you like, oh, uh oh. Or I think I think our team had known about Passbook before the official announcement, um, so it wasn't it wasn't a surprise to us. And it's actually it's solving a similar problem but taking a different approach. So so there's a way for us to to possibly integrate hmm. with the, with what Apple is trying to do. It's just a business decision of whether we're going to do it and how soon and in what way. But hmm. um, but. Uh, I think it's great that they've come up with that actually. Okay, so you've you've launched got it for three months now. I think about that, mm -hmm. and it had reached how how many subs again? How many subscribers or how many members you have now? We've we've got um, total downloads right now. I think is it's it's over twelve thousand. Twelve thousand. Yeah, twelve thousand. And merchants? How many merchants? Merchants. Um, right now we've got 
we're approaching 20 brands, 20 okay. merchants, but a uh, number of actual store locations is, I think, approaching 200, 150 yeah. to 200. Mm -hmm. um, so okay. there's, there's receptiveness to it from the market. Yeah. And also there was some competition, even in Thailand itself, right? Sure, sure, yeah. So I, I, after, after um, we recorded, got it, an episode, I found out later that there are at least two other Thai companies doing kind of similar to what you to what you're doing, and yeah. I just happened to know both of them. <laughs> so that, that's, that's <laughs> okay. So back to back to starting up a company. So starting up a company in Thailand, what's the most challenging you find finding the right people, or I don't know, what would be the challenge? From the perspective of our company, some of the challenges we faced is um, just the it's it's not that friendly for startups. Mm -hmm. It's it's there's a lot of steps involved. Um, setting up a bank account is very manual. Um, you know because our our team we have several owners, several co-founders. Yeah. Just setting up a good you know stock structure and sharing and all that stuff. It's 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 been very challenging. Mm -hmm. um, those are the challenges we've faced so far. I'm sure Rob and, and Bob, you know, have, have faced a lot more. Any any surprise for you, Bob? Uh, so I mean, uh, for my my other business apps, and um, this was one that I was starting alone without any Thai staff, um, and I would say the administration is very difficult. Uh, even finding the information on exactly the process that you have to go through mm. is difficult. Um, so, example, uh, uh, I mean, every step of the way is is tough. So, in you know, in the UK, if I want to set up a company, I, I fill out a, a one page, send a thousand baht, and a week later, I get you know confirmation. Here's your certificate. You've got a company. But here, there's many different kind of ministries you have to go to. There's not like a one a single place that you just go. Mm. You know do what you need to do and then you leave with the company there's there's a lot of different things you know registering for different tax mm. and um, the, the problem is finding that information clearly in English um, obviously the, f the few sources of that information are going to be lawyers who want to do the process for you so what I found most difficult was knowing what to try and do myself mm. you know which they're going to try and you know charge a, a large amount of money for which is actually quite easy mm. and which is actually a real struggle and you know I shouldn't try and do myself mm. but instead I try to do everything myself and have found that some of the things I really wish I'd just paid someone to take away that headache because okay. you know doing my own work permits and things like this took like four days going in spending nearly all day there coming back and just you know things that probably someone who knows the process could have just done a lot quicker. Do you find that the corporate rubber stamp is very important? The, uh, literally, I mean, yes, yeah. yeah. You need that rubber stamp for almost <laughs> everything. Writing down a check, every document, you need but that rubber I'll stamp. I'll tell you what, you it's an optional thing when you register the company. Mm. So, in the UK, I don't use a rubber stamp. So I said, okay, I'm just going to sign. I'm not going to have a rubber stamp. Right. After getting asked for it about a hundred times, I thought, okay, we we need to get a rubber stamp pretty quickly <laughs> because people don't even know that you can't ha not have a rubber stamp. So yeah, I'd say uh, it's. It's pretty necessary. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to touch on the visa topic so that uh, I can, so that Adam can share his experience or has some opinion. Well, so starting up a company, you find that getting your visa will be a challenge. You, in your case, an exception, right? Because you uh, got that already. Yeah. So it's it depends. If you're registering a Thai company, once that's done, then it's just you know the next step that you have to go through. Um, it depends the way you want to do it. So when I first came here, it was uh, on business being sent from the UK company. So it's the UK Thai company is the same essential company, but mm. as a registered UK company, you're allowed to apply for a business visa for uh, you know a, a foreigner to come to Thailand to investigate doing business and setting up a business here. Mm. Um, this process is getting more difficult because there's some people that are kind of exploiting that system where they're actually getting a business visa and then coming you know, for a year-long holiday. So they've actually made it now that you need to be invited by a Thai company as well as sent by a... Have to. Yeah, so you now have to have an invite letter from a Thai company and 
have a company from the company uh, a letter from the company sending you if you want to just come and do business mm. but if you're registering as a Thai company mm. then that company can apply for the visa for you but the problem is depending on what type of company you set up there's other restrictions so uh, Absinthe is a BOI promoted company which means there are it, it's a longer process to go through but once you are set up there's uh, different kind of rules and one of those rules is that you can uh, you can employ multiple foreigners without having to meet certain criteria that as a, a, a normal Thai company you would have to meet. So for a, a, a normal Thai company mm. you have to have uh, 2 million baht capital and 4 mm. Thai employees for every one foreigner. Mm. Uh, for BOI you don't have those restrictions but at the same time the foreigners you do employ should be specialists that are going to pass on some kind of knowledge or information to Thai staff so uh, they don't want you to set up a, a Thai company and employ foreigners that doing positions that Thai staff could just as easily do but the, the point is to be uh, to set up a company where there's knowledge transfer where in for example the tech IT industry they deem this as kind of a semi-important industry mm -hmm. so there are these allowances because they want to encourage people with that I IT experience mm -hmm. to come and, and you know help improve and increase the, the kind of uh, the size of the, the Thai mm -hmm. IT market so um, fortunately you know the industry we are working in there are these allowances but you do have to go through that longer process of setting, setting up the company mm -hmm. maybe in three to four months to, to actually realistically three to four months to, to set it up. I'm surprised you mentioned your daytime job so the company fully acknowledged what you're doing with got it fine do it they don't mind. Uh, so <laughs> I, I'm the MD of that company the daytime oh. job so uh, I allow myself to okay. do it. <laughs> okay. But but, but that's that's the good thing is that obviously um, you know by doing that I have the flexibility that I can be available during the day. I, you know it's not it's not like just working evenings. You know I'm can can work on on got it as much as kind of as needed. So uh, I think that's that's the good thing is that a lot of the team have that flexibility and if, if they're not already full time for got it they have that flexibility in, mm. in kind of the, the, the salary job so um, you know we, we're not kind of restricted to just evenings and weekends. Okay and I think the most awkward situation will be Adam. Adam to stay with us right? Uh, yep. I think in your case a visa doesn't agree with you hey you should I, you, coming from a tourist visa that should impose some obstruction and um, yeah, the, the rules say that uh, if you if you come with a tourist visa, you're not allowed to uh, work in Thailand. <coughs> um, but when uh, when talking to the, the Thai embassy here in Stockholm, it's more like you, you're not allowed to work in Thailand for a Thai company. So you can't work as an employee, or uh, if you want to work as an employee or do business with Thai companies, you need a, a tourist visa. No, no, a, a business visa and, and possibly work permit. Mm. So, so I looked into this this a uh, few years ago uh, because I realized that I, I have my own company in Sweden, and uh, when I'm, whenever someone goes abroad, um, when you have your own company, obviously your, your clients aren't going to stop calling you or sending emails. So you still need to do some work uh, from the hotel room or or, or somewhere else, and that's that's first perfectly fine. That's that's something uh, everybody is doing. Uh, on their vacations, so it's it's a bit of a grey area mm. of, of what you can do and what you can't do. And uh, this uh, this venture with, with uh, Got It, the Got It team is is like the, the first first time I've been uh, been uh, I, I have to look into more okay. what what I need to do to to make this the, the right way. But I would imagine have, having yourself in got it this early in the stage would give you kind of legal or easier way to to, to, to work in Thailand. Though it's, it's 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 really a proper company, not high. You're not freelancing the kind of things. It's it's. Uh, I guess you could say it's like a door opening opener for me. Yeah. Right. Yes. That should be the word. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's a, to do uh, business with uh, with Thai companies as well, not, not just um, helping my Swedish clients from the hotel room. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anything and anything you want to add more to this on the visa, or what's your opinion about the Thai, or comparing to other countries, or 
you know, in terms of the va working visa, was it hard to get? It, it's a bit strange that uh, that you don't. Well, how should I put it? Well, there, there, there isn't any uh, any good solution currently. But it's like uh, either you are a tourist or you are invited uh, by some company that will work for. There, there is no mm. no middle ground in between that. So uh, that's that's not something I would like to see in the future. But you could get some uh, I don't know some kind of freelance visa or mm. or something in in between. Uh, okay. Uh, being a tourist and being an employee. Okay. I think I think Bob you want to add more to so, some of that. Yeah, I agree. I think for you know, for wanting to come with the 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 intention of possibly starting a business here, um, that middle ground is quite hard to, to, to you know to, to get the right set up, the right visa now. Um, it's been made more difficult, so previously that was okay. Um, I think I understand that the restrictions that are in place with foreigners working here, you know, the the reason is to to not you know uh, to t to avoid taking jobs away from from Thai workers. You know, it's a, a protective kind of industry, and also with the the restrictions on foreign uh, ownership of companies, is to stop big companies just coming in and, and taking over that industry. But um, when kind of the intention is to come and start a business and produce extra jobs. Then actually, it's it's mm. it doesn't allow for that, which is something that should be encouraged. So mm. it's uh, unfortunately it's kind of um, you know st restricting uh, some growth through through you know these these kind of rules. Well, maybe the government just doesn't want foreigners. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, you know, I think uh, could I don't know. <laughs> who knows? Who knows? So what's your story? Um, Backtrack to start. Uh, this I'm talking to. Oh, I think you, you see the video, right? So, yeah, I'm talking to Rob now. So, starting a company, how do you find? What's I mean? It's not your intention to start a company in Thailand, right? It wasn't my intention to start a company in Thailand. And in the, eventually, you evolved into that. Right. That's right. Um, I think I have the probably the most um, unusual uh, way of doing this because. Uh, I what I did was I I took uh, about six months off from working to build a prototype, which I then of a product which I then pitched to a venture capital firm here in Bangkok, a brand a pretty much brand new venture capital firm in Bangkok, and a, a Thai company? No. Yeah. What? Thai, yeah. Thai funding. Okay. Yeah. So one of the um, partners is uh, is is uh, Kun Paul. He's the CEO of Insogo. Okay. And after about five meetings with uh, with with him and his partners, uh, this VC firm decided to invest in in into Playbasis. Right. And along with the investment, they were able to give us um, Lexus, not Lexus, <laughs> <laughs> but things like free office space, um, help with accounting, help with um, HR, All help right. with setting up the companies. The BOI, all of the all of administration stuff, oh my. they're gonna help That's help cool. us with, yeah. Because if they're gonna invest the money in this venture, they don't want it to fail. Obviously, they right. have invested interest into it, right. so they're gonna help take care of all that stuff. So the road road for me is is much smoother. But I I've done the research and I echo what Bob is saying, and and it is very difficult to start a business in in Thailand. There are some. Um, as a foreigner, as a foreigner, there are some privileges privileges that being an American allows um, uh, foreign business owners. Um, there are some certain treaties that Thailand and America have signed, mm -hmm. but um, for the most part, I think um, Singapore, if you're looking regionally, is mm -hmm. much more um, foreigner and much more uh, entrepreneur friendly. I would say. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So, in terms of visa, you got any problem with that at all? I've never had any problem with visa. I've always been it's always been something that I've I've always tried to do uh, by the rules. Yeah. So you know, I came in originally. Otherwise, you wouldn't come here and record it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I came originally to Thailand um, when I moved out here with the uh, with the business visa and the work permit process already started. Um, when I moved to the other company. I did the transition of the work permit, mm. um, so and then and then for a while, as I started up my company, I did become a tourist. But I always made sure I was 
following the process, applying for the tourist visa. Mm. So doing a few visa runs, but only like two, two or three, something like that. Mm. So and then finally now we got the business visa from the from the VC firm. So. Okay, forget about the visa part. So I was starting a business. You got some pictures. What about recruiting? Recruiting talents to develop the actual products. Yeah. Now this is a, this is um this is a challenge because from the beginning I. I, I wanted to recruit people that I thought not only could do the job, but were going to be passionate about the product and passionate about the, the team and the, and the, and the company. Um, and so sometimes that's a little bit difficult, especially when you're doing a startup or, or a product that there isn't um, a whole lot of, uh, of well-known examples out there. Of. When you're trying a new concept. Just copy yeah. Farmville. Yeah. That's exactly. easy. Yeah. Yeah, but when you're not saying copy Farmville and you're trying to describe this new thing, sometimes it's difficult for people to understand. Especially the Thai people who have to work for you. That's what I mean. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so what I would do is after I, I convinced enough, I built a very cool team. I I, I love my guys, and um, we're we're all Thai all Thai staff. And what I do now is I I invite them in to the room with me during the interview process because. I don't want a uh, language barrier to be an issue, so I allow them to speak Thai. Um, I, I know com some companies force the English only rule. I've been in those kind of companies before, but they have that. Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I let them speak Thai, and I encourage them to come in with the interview process and explain the, the, the business and the concept in Thai using using terms or whatever that would make. Uh, a potential candidate understand easier so um, I think building that team has, has been really important and I think if you're starting a company in Tha uh, Thailand and you especially IT and you're looking for talent um, it's it's actually very likely that the good talent that you're gonna find already have jobs yeah so <laughs> what you need to do is you need to be proactive in your search um, you can't rely always on job boards because sometimes these people aren't necessarily looking for new jobs. Mm -hmm. So what you have to do is be proactive. Use use tools like LinkedIn. Yeah. You know, connect with people on the internet. Um, let them know what you're doing. Give them the idea that you they, they might have a you might have a fit for them here. Um, let them think about it, and maybe in a few months they'll they'll decide to join you. And that's how it's, that's been the case for me actually. Mm -hmm. Do you find Do you find there are Quite a few people like you doing this in Thailand, or or you find, am I the only one doing this in Thailand? Yeah. So my concept, my company is around gamification, right. and there are not that many gamification people in Thailand. Right. Um, interestingly enough, I, I met uh, a, a gentleman, a Thai, getting his PhD in gamification in oh. Italy right now. <laughs> <laughs> So he's coming back with a PhD, and he may join our our team. And that'd be very that would be very cool to have him. But this concept of gamification, where you're um, you're making um, everyday life more fun, or digital, digital interactions with 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 products and websites and stuff more fun, more engaging. Um, it's 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 not a difficult concept to to sell because people can understand fun, but sometimes they don't understand how you can leverage fun in the workplace or in learning or in savings or in health. And when you show them that you can make working out more fun, you can make saving your money more fun, you can make learning more fun, then all of a sudden you can really transform things and make a positive impact. So that's that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to partner with um, all the market verticals, mm. health, healthcare, fitness, um, banking, consumer internet, and try to make it more fun for people. Okay. Back to the Got It team, so how do you find recruiting talents for your team? Was it hard to find or? We, we haven't really <clears throat> faced that issue yet because our team is, our team is fairly complete. Okay. And, uh, wow, that's nice to hear. Yeah, but it's it's, it's not going to be forever, you know. Just in this ramp up phase, this is where we're at. So, um, in the future, I'm sure we're gonna we're gonna face similar problems as as Rob has faced. I know Bob has has had to build absinthe from just himself to the current size of the company. So, so so for me, I think finding 
initially finding that you know the first couple of developers was uh, the biggest challenge. You know, also in knowing what kind of uh, quality would be available. I mean, this the same sort of thing as what Rob was saying is that you know the top talent are often or top talent are always employed, but actually in uh, in kind of what what we were trying to do, mobile development. Actually, there's a lot of small companies here who have formed around a developer. So mm. the developer has, you know, joined with a business person, with a designer, and uh, and then set up their own company. So not really looking to uh, to do anything, you know, outside of that, and uh, and quite content to you know continue uh, with their own business. So finding people that are actually employees yet uh, of a very high standard um, is tough. And and so fortunately, um, through Doing the AS startup event and, and joining the, the, the Got It team, um, I met Bob, who uh, is built and continues to work uh, on, on all the iOS uh, stuff. So he's one of the Got It founders also, um, and now also works with me during the day uh, at Absinthe. So um, you know he's really strong um, and is, is now kind of overseeing kind of project management on on both platforms. But mm. we. We used LinkedIn as well to, to find some, some other guys when we, we started to, to expand. And fortunately now, through having a few developers, they have developer friends. And mm. it's, it gets slightly easier. easier that there's, there's kind of a few champions for your company putting mm. the word out. And, uh, and, and you know, we, it's, we've managed to, at the moment we're recruiting and, and it's not, not been as tough this time. Really. What about the quality of the people? Are they qualified or... Was it hard to find qualified people to do the programming? Uh, since you're not involved with that, but mm. uh, so I mean, Sorry. the uh, I think it is difficult, but um, I just say that it's because the, the the good people are in high demand. But um, there's I think there's a lot of good people out there. It's just whether you are doing something that's different enough or interesting enough or offering uh, even just an experience that's different. So. Uh, you know, we've spoken with some who actually have you know really good jobs, but they're they are driven to leave maybe a big company because mm. they they want to be part of uh, a newer company. They see the growth potential. Um, you know what initially Absinthe was only serving international clients, so for some people it, that that's an attractive thing to work on projects for kind of Western companies. Um, you know, with Absinthe as well, we we offer app marketing, so we're. we're Offering more than just development, we're trying to be like a, a full service app agency. Whether it's kind of at the initial stage, helping with market research, coming up with ideas, concepts, building the app, and then doing the launching and the ongoing marketing. So we're trying to cover kind of the full spectrum of, of app related services. And so we are, you know, increasingly becoming experts in you know in apps. And so the 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 type of projects that we, we are working on uh, are getting kind of more and more interesting so um, I think that the you know how fulfilling that the work actually is is something that we, we try to sell and I think uh, you know so far I think everyone that we've interviewed who we've, we've wanted to employ has, has joined us and I think that's you know that's that's really positive but if uh, if at any time the work stops being interesting then you know I think we've got something to worry about so I think first there's finding that talent and then there's you know making sure that the work environment mm -hmm. and the work itself is is something that they're going to want to you know stay okay. stay being part of. Just add something okay. to that um, uh, a friend um, a friend who has has a software development shop here in Bangkok as well part of his pitch when he was recruiting staff and programmers is yes we we, we have outside clients <clears throat> to pay our bills and we mm -hmm. do the work, but really what we want to do is build our own products. Okay. You know, and I, I think maybe a lot of companies get in this situation where, where you know, the intention is you have some ideas, you want to build a product, but you got to pay the bills and pay the rent and everything, so you take on outside work, and and sometimes you get into uh, a, a different, a difficult situation where you become dependent on that income. And it's difficult to make a break and actually work on your own product. So mm -hmm. I bring this up because uh, I met a friend recently who's who's in that situation. He mm -hmm. recruited talented staff with with that nugget, yeah. you know. And now it's 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 difficult for them to actually make that jump where they're doing their own products because mm -hmm. they they still need that money. So yeah, if I could add if I could add to the to the recruiting challenge here in Thailand is that um, in in America there are there are career paths for for IT professionals, for programmers. Mm. You can continue to be 
a programmer for for many many years, and you can make a lot a lot of a lot of money. Um, here, it's more so um, you're mo you're moved into a management role. Right? Have to. Yeah. You kind of forced to. Yeah, <laughs> and, and it's difficult to get to to get very senior, very expert level programmers to continue to be programmers because eventually they either forced to or just feel that they should be a manager or they should go and start their own company or something. Mm -hmm. So you get this this crop of mostly recent graduates yeah. who you have to kind of f pick and find the right ones. Yeah. And that's basically the talent pool that you're looking at. Um, it's rare to find the, the guy who's maybe 30, 31, 32, 33, maybe 35, and who's still willing to be a programmer be a developer yeah. you know so I think that's one of the challenges but in America it's it, that's not a challenge at all because mm. there are there are career paths for yeah. these programmers remind me of a, a friend of mine I'm 42 by the way but a friend of mine same college we graduated from the same place she she really enjoys engineering and she really says she just wants to do this but the company keeps moving her up mm. or giving her some administrative role or change her to management, but she she was really uncomfortable in that position. Right. It's kind of a norm here in Thailand, though. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have anything you want to add to this, well, in terms of the talent pools of pe IT people in Thailand, was it hard to find them, or is there any, or any, any, any idea you want to share? Adam? Uh-oh. And uh, I haven't been involved in any process like that at all. So. Okay, so so you you never you don't have to recruit people from Thailand or anything like that, right? No, no, no. I don't have my company in Sweden. That's just me. So I'm not even recruiting Swedish people. <laughs> <laughs> on the other hand, though, since since touching on that, um, I was talking before we go into the recording. I I had a friend who is running a software company here in Thailand and he said he's, he, he got when he posted on his corporate website uh, asking uh, recruiting IT professionals he said he had um, a few applicants from Mediterranean or so, sorry from Scandinavians from Scandinavian area uh, and they were willing to accept like 30 or 40 thousand baht salary just to stay in Thailand but he was not trusting my friend was saying these guys are probably looking for a work permit or a visa just to come to Thailand and they would jump later um, I don't know if you have any idea on this do you, do you how do you find do you find real people who actually want to come to Thailand just for that amount of money um, I think it it's possible because uh, the living cost in, in Thailand is so much lower, so you don't need such a high uh, salary that you need uh, in Scandinavia. But I, I've seen, uh, have uh, some some friends who, who live in uh, in Thailand now and have uh, have uh, stepped down from their high salaries in, in uh, Scandinavia to lower salary in Thailand, and still I think it's worth it. So you think it's a credible story for people to, to stay, to, they love Thailand so much that they are willing to accept 40 or 50,000 baht a month? Uh, yep. Believable? Well, 50,000 baht a month. Yeah, that's not bad. That's yeah, not that yeah. bad for most but, people, I would say. Right, but yeah. 30,000 is pushing yeah, yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, so oh, that was one topic that um, Rob was saying that was oh, interesting. Funding the company. Yeah. So how do you find that? So again, it was um, it was a long process, and, and is there the, such thing as venture capital in Thailand? There's there's a very small small community, and they all know each other. So the you're word, all Thai, sorry. Um, some foreigners. There are some foreigners, but most of them, there's there's some Thai. It's pretty pretty mixed. Mixed. Yeah, but um. It's nothing compared to what it's like in Singapore, and certainly nothing compared to what it's like in Silicon Valley. But um, I just I think it's the right time right now. I mean, I think startups, the region, um, even Thailand is starting to get more and more exposure. I think Bangkok was named um, Facebook's capital city just <laughs> not too long ago. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, so the IT, especially for the IT businesses, um, people are starting to look at Thailand. So. Um, I think the venture capital, at, at least 
Singapore knows Thailand. Mm -hmm. So we, we always have that. You know, the VCs in Singapore, it's easy for them to come out here and check out an interesting startup, just as it's easy for that startup to go pitch into Singapore. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times those Singaporeans are looking to expand outside of Singapore because mm -hmm. of the market so small. Mm -hmm. So you are looking, they are looking out regionally. So I think there, there's going to be some regional interest um, and that's and, and, and Thailand will benefit from that. Okay. Um, hold on. But <laughs> let's let's go back. You did you actually went to Singapore to, to get some funding? Um, part of my VC firm, they have a branch in Singapore. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's not like you go over to Singapore and start knocking on the door and hey, this is my business plan. Um, no. But when we raise our next round, we probably will be doing that. Okay. So we 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 got some seed funding to start the company and to prove our product and our business plan, build the team, okay. and then once we have uh, a solid product and a solid team, we will go out pitching for a big, a bigger round of investment. What do you think, um, with your idea and with um, with the talent that you have, wouldn't be, would you be better off pitching for the VC in Silicon Valley? Much bigger dream, but at a lot lower cost. I mean get the funding there because IT product you can do anywhere you can launch globally and you can still operate in China that's true I from what I've seen is that a lot of those times they're they're looking for um, they would want you to move to San Francisco you know, they would want you to move out there and okay. build up and operate from there all right yeah that defeats the whole purpose yeah <laughs> You're that, 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 that's anyway. what makes <laughs> that's what makes startups actually that's what makes Thailand a, uni a unique opportunity for startups <laughs> because the cost of living is so much lower you know I could never I could I could never with the amount of seed funding I received uh, to do this startup I could never do it in, in the US it's just too expensive but here the money goes a lot further so if you budget correctly you can you can have a six month runway okay. before you run out of funds right so Gulfstream Lexus <laughs> we, we hold off on all of that for now. <laughs> Anything you want to add in terms of funding? I don't know if you actually find you have to go through the VC at all. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting. Ever since um, ever since putting this team together and working on the Goddard project, it's, it's, it's exposed us more to funding options out there. I mean, we've, we've been bootstrapping, and, and the original co-founders put in some, some cash to, to give a runway to the product. Um, but, you know, we've been invited to... Uh, uh, a private pitch session to some VCs where we actually met the, the firm that invested in Rob's company as well. And uh, it's it's really in the early stages, like Rob says. It's 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 interesting because um, entrepreneurs do want to be here, but there has to be a there has to be like a thriving ecosystem for this to really really work. You know, mm -hmm. and the ecosystem consists of not only the entrepreneurs, the tech people, the investors, but but you need some I still think you need some support from the government or the, the academic sector as well because that's where the talent comes from. Mm. And I feel that's the part that's that's probably further behind than the other pieces at of the At least people. BOI would help. I mean, at least get some BOI, right? No taxes for yeah, five years. Yeah, I mean, that's a little bit. one piece of the puzzle. You yeah. Know? But okay. like, as, as Bob mentioned, that was like a four-month process, you know? <laughs> four, four months for a startup is, is like a lifetime. Yeah. So. Okay. Um, but it's 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 evolving every day. You know, I'm meeting more and more interested people that are looking for deals. We went to another pitch event um, at the Software Park, and out of that, a few private um, angel investors contacted us. I didn't even know there was an angel community here. You know? Wow. So it's okay being defined every day. And you also have this emergence of these uh, these co-working spaces as well. Yeah. yeah. And that's that's also a piece of the startup puzzle, I think. Uh, is, to, is to have these these kind of um, these hubs where startups can can work and operate and maybe build some buzz with their products, maybe bounce ideas off each other. I mean that's part of the, the startup community. I think. Mm. I don't know if you're familiar with um, some of the co-working spaces that. Are no, open. not really. Yeah, they've got like how would you describe them? Uh, so like there's Hubber, there's um, I mean there's a there's a sink. Yeah. Uh, so basically a place where generally smaller businesses can can go use the space, not necessarily work there full time, but do some of their work there. Uh, for some businesses, it's just to get a change mm. of environment, be okay. creative. But it's like a, a place where you know it's very much networking with other people, um, providing some 
tools and things that you know that startups need and trying to you know just connect people going through similar processes um, and and you know just as a as a whole as a community try and kind of increase that that, that support um, and connections for for everyone that's involved where is this I mean, for example so the hub is in Ekamai. yeah hub is uh, they open it in Ekamai. yeah yeah, yeah Ekamai is side four if you go inside for no, no, no. The, the, for for the audience, we we are recording in Ekamai, and okay. I live in Ekamai. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know that. Yeah. Okay. So um, they've they've you know they they these guys that started it, they they're really passionate about it. Um, they put in their savings into the business, and and they hired a guy who used to be um, uh, the social media marketer for Ensogo. So he's he's done a, a good job mm. promoting them as well. So there's Haba and Ekamai. There's another one that's going to be opening in the uh, Silom area called Launchpad. 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 Okay. Um, he's uh, it's run by a guy who was educated overseas as well. His name's Vincent. Mm. He's really passionate about startups and he wants to help the community here grow. There's at least one or two others that are in the pipeline as well, but those are the the two more prominent ones. There's the the sink. I, I think the sink yeah. they've opened in Lapau. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then there's another one in um, in Sukhumvit. Yeah. yeah. There's, there's so the sync I think is focused on on social ventures, but also you know in the startup space right. as well. Yeah. And the concept is just like instead of working at a coffee shop, yeah, you can work in this dedicated place with good off good good office chairs and nice desks. Right, right. And they usually I guess they open they have like nice hours. I don't know if they're uh, open yeah. twenty four hours a day, but it's not quite. But yeah, like from early to late. You know. Yeah. And good enough. Yeah, yeah, and you and you pay the monthly fee or a membership fee. And you get the Wi-Fi access, and you can use like meeting rooms and things like that. They have to have set up projector if you need it, mm. something like that. Yeah. I, I think one of the one of the core things they try to do is just get people that are skilled in different areas to start talking mm. and helping each other out. I mean, even though we're all doing tech-related businesses, the the reason we were able to do it is because of the people we met. Mm. You know, Bob and I met our co-founders at Startup Weekend. I'm sure you met some co-founders and and. and and your funders, mm -hmm. you know, and it's it's just getting those people to talk and connect and, and share business ideas, and that's to me that's part of the whole. That's what's really exciting about what's going on in, in Bangkok now. You know, people coming from different areas as well as Thai people that have really good ideas or good skills are meeting and, and forming new new mm -hmm. ventures. You know, Adam, you with us? Yep. You share Rob's idea of Thailand is actually in a very unique place, very interesting, and. Uh, it's it's yeah definitely really yeah, yeah I think the Thailand and the, especially the Bangkok just Bangkok because I I think the, the reason I ask that is because the government some of the government um, agency I think BO SIPA and BOI I don't know which one I, I'm I'm not sure which one is doing what but they were trying to pitch a tech hub a community in Samui in Phuket. <laughs> They try to put in software park in Phuket. I think they have that. You're not aware of that, right? You see how su successful they are. <laughs> this is six years ago. Still doing it, but no. So I don't know how, how far along that plan they went. But actually, they're trying to put some away. They were saying, well, um, people from Europe or they were they want some. Usually visit Samui and, mm -hmm. and and Phuket anyway, so why not make that as a tech heaven? Yeah. Come mm -hmm. here, work here, do the coding here, and oh. you can just stay here Enjoy for a long time. Enjoy the beach while coding. Yeah, <laughs> kind of, no, but uh, somehow I don't think that flies, so, mm -hmm. but they did try. But so, uh, okay, so Adam, you, anything you want to add onto this? Yeah, I think uh, those tourist areas are just <laughs> full of tourists. Yeah, <laughs> uh, when, exactly. When you go to Bangkok, you, you have a um, a great tech community already there. Uh, lots of people from all over the world, and, and including Thai people. Yeah. So it's uh, it's a great place to be. <laughs> I, I think I think the piece with um, you know if you're just focused on on non Thais, maybe that concept the government was trying to do would work. But but if you if you need Thai talent as part of the equation, then. Um, for better, for worse, it's it's mostly concentrated in Bangkok. And, you know, maybe some other areas are having bar camps pop up. I think like in mm. Chiang Mai. Yeah, and Chiang Mai, there's Chiang a couple, Mai, yeah. of, you know, a handful of quite established development companies. So. Talking about that, do you find it it help or it's it's it really part of the job to participate on those events, bar camp, for example, 
there were a lot of camps around. I wouldn't say, I mean, it's if you want to, to continue to make connections, then I think it's, you know, the best place to be doing it. So, um, you know, all of these events, whether it's the, the tech meetups or Mobile Mondays or Web Wednesdays, all Web these Wednesday. events, they are just ways of bringing together people who, you know, might be able to do some business together. So I think it's, you know, these these are the, the things that are, you know, supportive of the industry in the way that, you know, certainly coming and not having contacts here initially were, you know, the good ways to, to kind of make those inroads and, and make some connections. So I think, you know, if you're proactive and, and actually want to go out and meet people, um, yeah, then they're definitely worth uh, worth attending. You go at all? I do. I, I go to some, not, as, not, not all of them. Because, yeah. um, you know... It's usually during a weekday, and it's, I'm usually busy and okay. working. But um, and these types of events usually tend to just be like social drinking events mm-hmm. and stuff like that. But um, but yeah, I, I've definitely met some very interesting people at these kind of networking events. Um, you've got Web Wednesday, you've got Mobile Monday. We just had Founders Drinks at uh, at Hubba and Ekamai just last week or a week okay. week ago. Um, so all of these, yeah, you know, you do, and you see the, a lot of the same people also, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. And so um, there's some benefits to them, uh, certainly, yeah. yeah. You never see me there. I've never seen you there. Right, that's why I don't make money. <laughs> 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 now I know why Changkui never makes money. Changkui can, sp- I'm sure they let you sponsor some. Uh, some <laughs> and I'm very cheap. <laughs> I can't sponsor anyone. They, they should actually sponsor Chunk. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so I think, oh my god, there was some, some really... What about the resource, about community, of the tech you know, community in Thailand? Um, do you find it splitting between Thai, just Thai community where you can't go in there? Oh. Or is there any a, an expat community for the, for the tech industries or... Is there any website or anything you can go to? No, I think uh, I think these events are very mixed. I think there there are maybe you know half would be expat, which is maybe you know over proportional to you know if uh, and other events. Okay. But I think there's you know, maybe not quite that high, but there's I think there's a lot of uh, expats doing kind of some businesses or having ideas in this field. But um, I think it's it's very open. You know, Thai expat, whoever. Um, you know, it's, it's 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 open to everyone, and and I think it's you know there's oh. no no barriers there. What what would be your, for example, if you talk about internet, what would be the website that you would recommend people for to hang out or which web board or any? any Most community? of those I I found that we they're just Thai. So if you, if you cannot read and write Thai, then forget it, forget it. But even block block none, one of the more prominent ones, quite famous. They they put up some English some content. English content, yeah. But some yeah still some but yeah not. yeah. Okay. So is there any community where no, not really. I'm not saying online community, no. Mm. Interesting. Because yeah. <laughs> why when it, in Twitter, with the amount of people, I I think I I follow like seven hundred over people, and and with, with because I'm doing this this uh, podcasting things, so I got I I knew quite a few people and like you said, um, people in in each event tend to be same kind of group yeah. same group of people and I think this reminds me of that book um, Malcolm Gladwell's first book Tipping Point mm. there was this connectors Marvin Maverick, and there yeah. were there was some guy who were really just hops <laughs> you got to know this guy <laughs> he's a hops <laughs> so I think that, that such thing applies for the tech community in Thailand as well sure. where mm, you I think there's also there's a smaller there's a small community of um, Thai IT professionals who are comfortable uh, in English mm. and will tweet and Twitter and blog in English language mm. and these these are the very interesting guys because they can they can um, do both they can they can communicate with the expats mm. they feel comfortable doing the expat events and they can also go into the Thai web boards mm. and things like that mm. and mm. post things there. So I think the the those IT professionals, usually the the younger ones who are who are um, more open about using English language, I think these are some some, some maybe rising potential high potential um, individuals. I think. Mm. Okay. Anything you want? This it's already an hour. It's already an hour. So I I try to keep it 
with one hour, it's easier for me to edit. That's <laughs> all. <laughs> Anything else you want to add more into this? Is there anything topic you want to discuss or Adams? Anything you want to add? Uh, I, don't, I don't know. Maybe you mentioned it already, but if uh, if anyone is interested in uh, all these meetups we've been talking about, most of them are, are posted on uh, meetup.com. Meetup.com. Yeah, meetup.com. But but is it uh, so Thai? If you, if you just go to meetup.com and, and search for uh, events in Bangkok area, you will find most of, of the ones we mentioned. Okay, you use that obviously. Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh. Okay, interesting. You, anything you want to add onto this? It's open now. I I run out of my own questions. <laughs> Not really. So I was thinking. Okay. So what your next plan? What would be the next step for you? Got for you, Rob? For for play basis, um, we we're focused on. Uh, we need to generate revenue. So, um, <laughs> so at the moment, at the moment, still burning. Yeah. Okay. It's still burning, but um, we're building out our platform, and it's it's at a stage now where we can take it and present it to uh, potential clients, potential mm. partners. Mm. Say, would you like to add these features to your community mm. and possibly boost your traffic, your engagement, mm. content sharing, all of these, all of these metrics. Um, so we'll we'll be we'll be approaching agencies and, and brands very very soon. Mm. Generate some revenue. So when do we expect? Oh, to qu fourth quarter of the year you'll be busy pitching. Um, right. For for pitching for the next round. No, I'm oh, sorry. Just presenting. Presenting, <laughs> yeah. Presenting. We have our first client, so we'll be building out a, a whole bunch of stuff for them for the next two months. So we will stay very, very, very busy always. <laughs> <laughs> so that's your next step. Yeah. And what about you guys for the Got It team? Mm -hmm. What will be your next step? Yeah. So right now we're we're in the process of rolling out to some more brands, some more merchants. Hopefully some uh, some big announcements in the next month or two. Um, so we're just in execution mode, but at the same time we're we're trying to build a sustainable business. You know, as as fun as this is. And how it feels like a hobby sometimes. You know, we've we've we've, we've got to make money, whether it's just for us or if we have outside investors. You know, we're trying to build a, a sustainable business. So, um, I think every day we come up with ideas and experiments. We we talk to our customers with to see if this is something that we, we they would be willing to pay for, is something that could work for them, improve their business or whatnot. So, we're executing and experimenting at the same time. It's exciting. At this point in time, how much priority do you put on RIM and Windows 8 platform? <laughs> Zero. Oh. That's an interesting question. <laughs> <laughs> Good timing, though. Yeah. Um, you know, I think we will we'll keep an eye on other platforms. You know, at the moment, obviously, Windows 8 is not even available, and the uh, the SDK is not being given out. So, you know, I, I think actually they have uh, shot themselves in the foot a little bit by restricting access to the SDK at a time when they need to be, you know, encouraging as many developers to to, to try the, the you know the new platform as possible. So uh, I think at the moment Windows 8, you know, we'll wait and see what happens there. BlackBerry, I think, you know, we're, there's still quite a, uh, a large number of users in Thailand. Mm. I guess it's questionable how many of them are app users versus just kind of BBM users or, you know, people that use it for business. But um, I think, you know, we're, we're keeping an eye on it. At the moment, it would be the, the third one that we would be considering. Um, we just need to see, uh, you know, if it makes sense or if, you know, if there was, uh, you know, some encouragement from, from their part maybe to, to for us to... Uh, to, to port over to BlackBerry, so this is a conversation we're, we're looking to have soon. Now that got it on both Android and on iOS, is there any particular demographics of what I mean is, are there really different type of users, or do you see any difference people using? Not really. Yeah, we don't. We don't have. Statistics stuff. Well, that, I, 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 I mean, I think you know the the two platforms have different types of users, but you know the type of person drawn to got it yep. is a similar type of user on both platforms. So I would say there's not okay. likely to be much difference in the type of usage of got it because of the platform, um, but you know maybe in in uh, the way we would you know need to market to to each type of user that's quite different. Have you guys been asked by non-Thai markets? I mean, have have 
other people start asking you about this, can you, hey, you want to do this in Philippines, Indonesia, or yeah. US, or? Yeah, say three, three, three other countries right now outside of Thailand have approached us, and mm -hmm. we're talking to them about how we could structure it and make it work. Okay. Yeah. So that's open. Yeah, okay. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. So the, the interesting thing with this, this business is it's very um, dependent on local sales. So you need to be going and, you know, driving deals with all the local uh, restaurants. You know, there's very few chains that actually are, you know, managed from one country and, and, and you know, can push uh, marketing campaigns and things into all the countries. You know, there's, there's often franchisees or, um, you know, different people heading up each, each country. So um, there's quite high barriers to entry in, in terms of being able to, to expand. You know, you need to have a footprint there or a partner there who can build those local deals. So uh, the good thing is that there are still opportunities and you, you can't just be sat in Silicon Valley saying, right, we're going to launch a, a loyalty card program in every country worldwide because uh, it, it's too difficult to, to do it remotely like that. So um, it makes sense for us to speak to local partners, but in kind of neighboring countries mm -hmm. uh, and expand that way. Okay. Okay. This is kind of wrap up, but before I'm wrapping up, both companies are still in Europe startup phase. Even at this stage, looking back in time, would you have done something that you wish you could start it all over again? I mean, is there anything, is there any mistake that you made along the way so far, like I'm spending too much time on this, or or I, I wouldn't recruit people with this way again, or I'm not going to do this, or, I, I, or even as, I'm not going to start a business in Thailand, <laughs> or is there anything you want to share for those who want or a lesson Lessons that you want learned, to... I think not not really because um, I mean I would would I change anything I think no because I'm I feel I'm I'm in an extremely great situation right now and um, it's all happened by chance fate karma I don't know how I don't know how all these pieces felt like this but they just did <laughs> Look, looking back we when, when did you come what month August August night um, 20 what 10 yeah Two thousand and ten. Two, uh, two years ago. Two yeah. years ago. Okay, so okay. I, w I had no idea. At you that just time. no. You just missed the May red shirt riot. <laughs> oh right. <laughs> otherwise, otherwise you could have said, "You look, you're coming to Thailand, red shirt riot, and next year you got a flood. How can it be worse than this?" Right. <laughs> <laughs> so whatever happened, I'm prepared. That's right. So so far, no regret or no whatever. Regrets. It's not not much of a not no. No expensive lesson learned just yet. No, so and I did a lot of, I read a lot of books and watched a lot of videos and tried to learn as much as I could about how to do a startup the right way. So, okay. to learn from others, others' mistakes. Okay. It's no different from any startup in other countries. That's right. Okay. Anything you want to add or any lessons or? Mm, I think, I think we try to learn new things every day. Mm. You know, if we could have done something better. Um, Bob is really I wish good. I didn't go to that startup weekend. That's <laughs> 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 uh, definitely a one regret I think none of us have. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, we try to measure and track everything in our app, how people are using it, um, you know, and, and looking at what our competitors are doing, what other people in this space are doing in other countries. And I mean, we haven't made any grave mistakes, but but I, I think I think part of part of learning is looking at what decisions you've made and whether they were the best decisions at the time or could we have done more to get more information before making that decision or did we wait too long waiting for information to make that decision when we should have just moved earlier so I, I, I think one good thing about our team is that we all of us are trying to improve every day mm. um, but luckily nothing nothing too serious that has cost us mm. yeah. Okay. You, you in a way starting two companies uh, so, I, I would say just from uh, trying to do all the admin myself for setting up uh, Absent, I think, you know, when, when I first came, I, I was actually spoke with a lawyer, and I think they were maybe not so forthcoming with uh, what the full process was, so being the company set up is like one, one part of that ongoing mm. puzzle, and uh, I think I was a little bit put off after doing that one step to realize that there was you know going to be a lot more costs coming mm -hmm. so then I decided to do it all myself and you know it took a lot longer than maybe it, it needed to so I would say uh, you know some things I probably would just from day one um, 
have preferred just to, to, to pay someone to do that because um, I spent a lot of my time kind of doing the, these things that uh, really, you know, my time could have been better spent on, on growing the business. So rather than setting up the business and you know, doing all, all the, the paperwork and, and struggling through that, uh, I guess I, I kind of wasted some of my time there. So I would just say if you're <coughs> looking to set up a business as a foreigner here, speak to someone who's done it, get advice on which parts are manageable yourself, which parts are better to do with a lawyer or, or you know, a, a Thai friend or whoever's going to help you through it. Um, because I'd say some of it is, is easy enough and other parts are very difficult. So just try to get the information and probably the best thing to do is go to one of these meet-up events and chat to someone who's kind of been through it already. Yeah, yeah, that would help. At least, uh, you, oh, you have that problem too. Or I, I've been through that before. Yeah, that and me, they're, they're all, everyone's had these problems and yeah. everyone has tried it. Adam, on the parting note, anything you want to add on to this? Uh, um, I think I've said uh, everything so far. <laughs> <laughs> so you agree with all of them? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, okay, so how do we contact? Anything you want to add or, or you can say your, your, your personal contact or your website or your product, whatever, feel free to say. So how... Well, if you're interested in, in finding out more about... Um, or financing you. Or financing <laughs> uh, Gamification. Um, and our company, check out uh, playbasis.com. That's play b a s i s dot com. Play b b, -B a oh okay. s i s dot com. Playbasis dot com. That's right. And Twitter, Facebook, or it's all on there. Okay. But yeah, got links to all of it. So just remember playbasis dot com. Okay. Okay, it's coming out. Okay, what about it? The Got It team? Sure, I'll, I'll mention Got It first, and then Bob can mention the absent. Mm -hmm. So, um, Got It, um, our website, just start there. You can contact us through there. Our, web, our Facebook page uh, is linked from our website. The address is uh, www.u-got.it. So, it's www.u-got-it. Mm. Um, hopefully, you can put that on the screen. Yeah, it's I will. A, it's a little oh. hard to say. Okay. okay, and that's all you want to leave on there, right? You don't. Your, your Facebook is very personal. You don't think I don't think you personal? post anything at all on Facebook. Oh, yeah. You, you're not. Are you active? Yeah, yeah, we're pretty active okay. lately. But um, just in terms of what we're looking for, you know, if you're interested in, uh, if you're a technical person or a business development person, um, those would be two areas that that we would be looking to hire in the near future. Um, if you're an angel investor, you want to find out more about our team and what our needs are for growth, feel free to contact us. Mm. And uh, if you own a business that you think can benefit from our platform, give us give us a, a call as well. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, so for Absinth, uh, our website is absinth.net, which is A-P-P-S-Y-N-T-H dot net. Um, we've also just recently launched a, a Facebook group, uh, App of the Day, which is in Thai introducing uh, you know, a single iOS and going to be Android very soon application every day. Uh, so that's facebook.com forward slash apps.co.th. Um, and yeah, get in touch if you're looking for anyone to help with marketing an application or anyone looking to build an application. Um, and also, I think developers were always uh, open to, to talking to, to, to new people and connecting. And, you know, if there's any uh, opportunities to work together, that can be discussed. Okay. Adam, anything you want to add? How do we contact you? <laughs> or you, you want to go through the, the, the Got It App team? Yeah, yeah. The, the, the Got It App team is, is the way to go. I'm, uh, um, I'm going to come to uh, in by the end of December, I think. I'm going to stay there till the uh, end of April. Ooh, that's a long one. So uh, just catch me on, on the meetups down there. Hey, can I say one? Adam, Adam, maybe you can um, just give a plug about your 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 expertise, you know, what space you work in in case there's some companies that might want to contact you about that. Yeah, so I'm, I'm mainly a, a Java developer, but I've been doing uh, Android development, which is also Java. I've been doing that for about three years. Uh, so I'm, I'm most active... Uh, in communities around uh, Android, and I'm 
happy to share my knowledge. I've been given uh, talks at uh, all kinds of tech events around Southeast Asia. Mm. Uh, my my favorite events are the bar camps. Mm. Uh, uh, unfortunately, I've never been to a bar camp in, in Bangkok. I missed all those. But I've been to uh, Chiang Rai and Yangon, uh, Siem Reap. Uh, oh, okay. Hey, you can be in a few places. I believe, there is, I believe there is a new uh, bar camp coming up pretty soon in, uh, in Bangkok. They're starting to organize it. Mm. Um, so hopefully it will be postponed and, uh, until I arrive. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, the current plan is November, December, something, so we'll just miss it again. <laughs> okay. So your contact. So your contact, you, you want to leave it at um at the at the Got it Up team, contact you through the Got it Up team, right? No Twitter or emails or anything you want to leave? Twitter handle is uh, nada9. What? Twitter? Sorry? That yeah, was... my Twitter handle is nada9. So it's Adam with the letter N in the four and the uh, number nine after. A-D-A-M and then N nine. N-A-D-A-M. First, sorry? First letter is his last name. N N A D A M. N A D A M. Nine. Oh, nine. <laughs> like that. Okay. Yep. Okay. Okay. I I type it in there so I can look it back later. I I have to, I have to make sure I make I put that on the credits. That's all. Okay. That's all. So, actually, I just realized in every podcasting, you usually start up a program and say what this program is all about and. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot all of that. I keep I to jump to the topic always, all the time. So, if you if you like our program, com, you can go to, you can actually donate. That's how I actually make any money at all through donation. Um, that's on the PayPal, and the PayPal account is on the chunkwe.com website. And uh, or you can donate or uh, transfer on my to my own account as well on the web, our web website as well. And chunkwe is running at the moment. We are running four. I think we're running four programs. Uh, the weekly tech program, it's then weekly, I'm doing it monthly, but I still want to put it weekly. <laughs> I, I try, I try. <laughs> and then we have a daily program. Uh, uh, daily program is on Monday to, to Friday. We talk about tech technologies. Uh, actually reading all the news, that's all, in, in Thai. And then we have My Lab Menon, which is an entertainment program. And um, hopefully I can get the latest episode, the Star Trek episode, in the next week or so. One, two, three, and then they have a uh, Lumen Ban, which is about home, uh, home improvement kind of things. Uh, that's the four programs that we run. We try to have four programs coming out every month, but since I have a daily program, so it's easy uh, to, to have a program comes on every day. We got just an audio podcast. All other podcasts I'm doing on, on video like this. Okay. Thank you very much for coming over and for a short notice, especially you guys. <laughs> you on a short notice for coming and thank you very much Adam it's lunchtime <laughs> about there right in Sweden yeah right okay uh, thank you too okay thank you very much okay we say goodbye yeah. to the audience together okay thank you very much good night